I'm delighted to uh, see you after, I don't know, maybe it's it's got to be five or six weeks since um, Kiddo was shot. Yeah. Um, and obviously I saw a lot of you during the shoot, but I haven't spoken to you <laughs> So um, I'm really, really chuffed that you've agreed to sit and talk to me for a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for the benefit of those that haven't met you before or seen you on screen, can you just give me a little bit of a... A, a potted history of uh, Lisa Howard? Oh, uh, well, I am Lisa Howard and I am a woman of a certain age from Cumbria. We've talked about that before as well, haven't we, Cumbria? Yeah. Um, and now I'm now based in Leeds and I'm an actor, um, uh, an, an actor for hire, usually. Um, I've done loads of theatre and some screen work, not not tons of film, which I I would love to do more. Mm. And I'm so delighted to be involved with Brett and Jordan, and hopefully they'll use me more and more now. Um, sure. Yeah, I've I've been an actor for as long as I can remember. Really, I knew I always wanted to do it. I started on the stage um, when I was thirteen. Um, not not professionally, but just yeah. joined a local youth theatre in Kendal that you know, oh, yeah. and I just knew that that was my salvation. I knew that that was going to fill my heart and mind and soul, and um, pursue telling stories, other people's mm -hmm. stories, and my own stories, and communing with audiences, however which way I could, and I've been endeavouring to do that since really. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but then it's taken me all over the world. My love of theatre and performing, and and more and more, I've been trying to get film work and and stuff like that. Really, mainly because I'm getting a bit old for doing two shows a day <laughs> in, and and hiking myself around different parts of the country, living out of a suitcase, which I do mm. love. Mm. But you've got to temper that with other stuff too. Um, and it's just a different, yeah, a different genre that I'm excited, yeah, to to attempt to try mm. and look at. And that's that's my my professional side. I personally, I um, personally, what what can I say about personally? I am I, I live on my own, but I have a nice boyfriend, and I don't have kids because that would be just like too difficult to try and do. <laughs> Profession is mandatory. You don't have to have them. <laughs> no, you don't. And I never, ever, ever wanted them. And I'm, and and it turns out I was right, and mm. it's all good. And so, but it just means I've lived the life of Riley. So my dad said, right. Um, and I fill my time with allotments and different hobbies, crafty, makey, doy, creative. I like just making and doing. And um, I'm a, I would say I'm probably a bit of a loner. Love it in my garden, really? and just. Um, Are you an only work... child, or have you got? Um, no, I've got a young younger sibling, who is four years younger than me, and he's got a son and daughter, stepson and daughter, who my nephew and niece, who I adore, mm. and um, and so I didn't. I yeah, they they fulfil my need for any kids. Sure. Um and uh yeah. Um what else was I gonna say about that? Yeah, a bit of a loner in in a sense, but then when I'm at work I'm quite gregarious and I do enjoy Yeah, I didn't get a sense of that different... when I met you. Absolutely. I love being in whatever company I'm in work wise is my family of the moment. Mm. And I really enjoy that co collaboration with people. And and I love being part of that, but I'm equally happy to go home, and yeah. lock myself in, and watch a film or cook something and Just being your grow own a vegetable. Yeah. 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 You're a grower as well, then. You like growing. Oh yeah, that that's my main interest is growing fruit and veg. Right. Um, yeah, it sort of started as a bit of a hobby to see if I could do it, and then fast became an obsession and um was absolutely invaluable during 2020 COVID, yeah yeah and um yeah i was never out out of my allotment and 
Yeah, I love it. And yeah, I think they're my babies, really. Yeah. Growing, growing my veg and um, nurturing those and, yeah, excited to eat what I grow. Love that. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think I think um, mm -hmm. everybody has has lots of size to themselves. They're not just they sit in a room waiting to be called to go on stage and then they go back into the box and, <laughs> and wait for the next gig. <clears throat> it's it's most it's not very nice to doing that sometimes when you first start start out it was a bit like oh gosh when will the phone ring mm. and um you fast realize that you've you've got to try and make things happen yourself right. and get out there which i'm not great at the networking i'm actually terrible at networking but you do have to yeah put yourself about or try and create something and put it out there and get people interested in you that way because sitting and waiting doesn't yeah, work for me more, it? And, yeah. it, and back in the day it would have been the only thing that would have been the phone to ring not email or instagram or twitter or no well yeah. when i first started out i didn't i didn't have a mobile i don't know if they had them no, then i had a pager at the first a little pager <laughs> and it and it said ring your agent i'd be like oh <laughs> get your wellies off <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't I didn't have an allotment then I think right. I was yeah I was I don't know what a, how I waited then probably just yeah sat by the phone watching <laughs> well, and, and when, when you were so you started when you were 13 on stage at school obviously mm, um, school and, and youth theatre youth theatre right. and then and yeah. then what was your kind of educational experience to become an actor like was it all um, grown or did you go to to some schools I went to East 15 Acting School. Um, I did my A levels at, yep. um, in Kendall. Um, I think there was it was debatable whether I was allowed to do them because I chose really arty subjects. I did mm -hmm. art, pottery, and theatre studies. Right. And you weren't really meant to, but I think they, the headmaster they were ever so kind to me, considering I was. They just said you're an enigma. Lisa mm. but a, a pleasant and talented one which I oh, thought was really nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. um which which basically meant I wasn't very good at any of the <laughs> academic things but I showed you know promise in other areas so they let me do these A-levels which I didn't pass or barely passed really because I just sort of lost interest as soon as I was I hit mm. those sort of um teenage there's dangerous teenage years where you yeah. discover smoking and alcohol and boys yeah um <laughs> and so and then and then I actually had a few years out because I um I I didn't get in straight away to acting school which is what I wanted to do um and then I was I just sort of had odd jobs around Kendall and it wasn't until I was 22 that I actually got um got I got into some of the year before but I couldn't get a grant for a while right. so the youth theatre and the people of Kendall helped me fundraise they were so kind and I got different funds and bursaries and then eventually when I was 22 I went to East 15 acting school which is in at Loughton in Essex, just okay. outside of London, still on the tube line. So mm. I think you can just, say it was London. Yeah. yeah. Um, which there was, I never felt fully at home in London. Mm. I tried to I stayed there a little while after I studied there, studied there for three years. And then I just thought, ah, oh, I really need to get back up north. Really? Which I, yeah, which I did. And I'm, I'm, yeah, just feel, I'm just very northern, really. And what did you then, not like about London? I think it was more like I felt it didn't like me, I think. Oh, okay. I don't think, I don't know. I, I mean, I do love going there. I love going there. Mm. And if I if I ever get work there, I really enjoy it. But mm. to live there, I just felt, oh, felt I, can't, I can't. It's hard to be out of work in London, uh, I think, mm. and to pay the rent. Sure, and yeah, I'm, of course. I can't, I'm not one of them that could do the call center stuff or mm. work in box office or whatever I just I like my own time I just like to live at a different pace so mm. um I've nothing against London it's it's fantastic to visit and it's an amazing capital city and it's exciting and multicultural and, and I, I love it but not to live there yeah and I, I don't think you're alone there I think a lot of people feel yeah. that yeah um, it's a good place to just dip into and then jump straight back out of back into 
I admire the people that attempt it, but they do look yeah. a bit frazzled sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How was your experience at um, at your college for those three years? Did you yeah, it was a mixed bag, really. I felt like they, I felt like they weren't really. Um, I felt like they wanted our money more than mm. anything. Um, when, when I was there, it was their last year before they lost their accredit uh, before they had to attempt to be accredited. They'd already lost their accreditation. Um, that's why I, I didn't get a grant for there. And they right. had been really well known and well thought of in the past. And um, Joan Littlewood um, started the the. East 15 and the, the people that worked there were all from Joan Littlewood's and uh, theatre company in Stratford East. And that's what had interests me because she was a real working class theatre director and used working class actors. So that was what really interested wow. me about it. But by the time I got there, it had lost a bit of its its shine. Mm. And 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 the, the year that I was in, I think they knew they were going to lose even more of their accreditation and they just accepted lots and lots of people onto this year. Right. And there's about 70 odd people in this year and there really should have been at most 30 and really mm. probably only 24 or something. Yeah. So I felt like it, it took the shine off for me because I thought, oh, I thought I thought I must be really have really have something to get into a drama school. And then I saw a lot of people who there who well, to be honest, I didn't think I had what it took mm. um, to, I don't think they really had thought about what it might be to be an actor. And so so there was that, but, but I met some people that were fantastic to work with other students. And, um, but I kept, I did think I learned more from my youth theatre at the Brewery Arts Centre mm. than I, I did from East 15, to be honest. And, and, the most experience and the most um the, mo the the most experience i got was from actually working and finding the jobs and getting the jobs and east 15 was a bit of a stepping stone towards mm. towards that um it was quite interesting in the second year there though we you go to york sheriff hutton in york um for a term um i don't know if there was any good reason for that other than we put on Christmas shows and they got income from us. Right. Um, but the, the interesting thing was about that was we were like totally cut off and it was a little bit, um, it, it was a, bit, a little bit like an experiment to see if, if the if survival of the fittest really, right. all these second year drama students um, being pushed to the limits and because it was, it was quite method um back in the day East 15 and 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 some people were unsure about how far to go and how far to take things and I don't think those those students fared very well but such as myself who is I'm ridiculously practical and down to earth I, I sort of managed and quite enjoyed it mm. um and I think if one good thing it taught me it was to sort of be in character um, because we'd have like we'd have a week long project where you had to be in character and people lived in in the house. And and so you were just in character all the time. And it, for some people, that was quite dangerous psychologically. But I quite enjoyed that. And consequently, I think I am one of those actors now who can sort of slip in and out of character and um, enjoy being in it, which I think is useful for film and useful for kiddo and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't um, give it a very good uh, East 15 then. I think it's, it's different now. It's, it's a university course and a degree course. And I think it's very much different. And the actors I've met who have survived from East 15 tend to be really, really good. That they do, actually. The ones that are still in the business from East 15, I think, oh, yeah, good. Oh, I'm glad to say that I'm an East 15er as well. So it was probably the the actual their method of teaching was 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 still good. It was just it was a bit people heavy, and then yes, probably quite yes. distracted as well. I think so. I think mm. so. And and maybe just just to be careful about 
um, t teaching people in those ways um, without give it, without you know talking it through afterwards. If you've been in heavily in character um, for a day, and we did we we did a project. It was quite famous for it at the time, it, um, and half of you would be Nazis and half of you would be Jews, and it was set in the Second World War, and and some of us you know would get shot mm. and we would have to escape to the woods and then there was never any really any real debrief on that and, and it affected some people I think um so yeah I think they just yeah needed to be a bit more cautious and I think they are they are now they mm. are now but then um back in the back in the day mm. they just left us to it really and to fight amongst ourselves you know, when you finished at um, East 15. 15. Um, yeah, not East when, 17. I know, I was very tempted. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> it's obviously East 17. Just say it, Scott. And I was like, no, I don't think it is. <laughs> um, what, so you, you finished your course um, and you had all that experience. You went zipped, presumably back up to, to Kendall relatively soon after. When was the kind of your first what you'd call your first break or your first real gig? Um, I, I tried to stay down for nearly a year in, oh, in London, actually, yeah. Um, and it just got, I just didn't really find anything. Oh. I think I was working behind a bar or something. And I just thought, oh, I don't, oh, this isn't for me. I just need mm. to get back to the hills, the hills of mm. Cumbria. So I went back up there and I and there was no work there either. But <laughs> um but the the old theatre group that I'd worked with, um, they were doing a they were having a trip to India. They were doing Hamlet and taking that to India. Oh, um wow. so so I I went with them, I played Ophelia and we we did it um performed in Delhi. And in fact, we only performed in Delhi, I think, because we, we toured around a bit, but only actually performed yeah, in yeah. Delhi. I might have that wrong. Oh, no, no, so no, it wasn't Delhi. It was Mumbai, but then it was Bombay. Um, so so that was really nice to yeah. to act again. And then and then after that, I came back to Kendall and worked as a taxi driver for quite a few months, as you do. Course. And a flor and florist uh, worked as a delivery for a florist in Kendall, and I was drawn to the driving jobs because I didn't have to talk to anyone or didn't have to deal with customers. And so, could think, could mm. think mm. absolutely could think, and I was thinking, when am I going to act again? <laughs> like that. And then I actually i i got um i i got a job an advert and actually it's the one and only advert I've ever been successful at and it was an advert for Focus Do It All I don't know if you remember them Ooh. it was a hardware yeah. company and um I had to I had to be um this mum who who um they buy a bar another she buys a new oven and then it's and then oh trust me I buy a new oven and it's and it's barbecue weather and then the husband comes out with the barbecue and that sort of thing and but it was um it was a quite a nice payer and it was about about four thousand pounds yeah cool and then I just thought oh my god it was way more money than I'd ever had before in my life and it sort of that gave me the money I needed to go and move somewhere else because mm. I loved loved my mum so much, but I was really knocking on a bit by then and I, mm -hmm. I thought I'd need to move out and then I'd sort of not quite put a pin in the map, but I knew I had to either be in London, Manchester or Leeds or one of the cities where I could get to different places from. Yeah. And I'd, I'd known people in Leeds before. My f some friends had been to university there. So I just thought, no, you know what? I'm going to go to Leeds. Mm. I picked Leeds and I was able to sort of, um, yeah, get I got a great housing association flat and 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 set off. And that was, yeah. So it, it wasn't exactly a big break, but it just sort of gave me yeah. a bit of leeway. Well, it is. It's a break. A four, four grand back then. Yeah, uh, no, that's a break. It doesn't matter how yeah. how you get there, and you know, TV adverts cool. Yeah, um, yes. Set you yeah. Up. Nothing I'd wrong do with another that. Another one if they if they came along <laughs> if, for the right thing. 
thank you for listening yeah. um <laughs> and then and then you're in Leeds and what you just went into stage work more than predominantly or um yeah I think I'd because that's what I knew from my the experiences I'd had had all been with theatre companies mm -hmm. and it's what I knew um and I hadn't done much or any training on screen so it just never really occurred to me to to try for that really mm. so I just went for things um there used to be a um a publication that I think I think it's might still be there called PCR and every Tuesday or whatever it was actors would get it and read it and then some some of these things you could apply for if you didn't have an agent and things like that so and I um I didn't have an agent back there, or I did. I had a London one that never ever rang me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd sort of apply for things myself. And I got um, I applied for a job in at the Torch Theatre in Milford Haven, um, to play Little Voice. And I'd, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's quite a famous yeah, I do, yeah, play, but the Rise and Fall of Little Voice. Yeah, and um, I'd done a bit of. I I mean I always sort of did in singing impressions as mm -hmm. as many people did growing of up in the seventies. You're a singer, aren't you? Yeah, That's yeah. Conversation about that, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So there were so many great female singers to impersonate in the seventies. It seems it was really big amongst my age group to be able to do Shirley Bassey or mm -hmm. you know different singers of the time. So I applied for that and I and I got it and I was so pleased with myself because it was without an agent as well and I did all the ringing up and said have you ever any more thoughts and about Lisa Howard <laughs> said, oh yes I think I think we're going to offer her it so I'm like come on, come on. <laughs> um, so I, that was that was sort of a bit of a break and then um some friends who I um uh, worked with in Leeds became agents which was oh, marvelous so then they became my agent and yeah, um, and then I just applied for for theatre jobs really, and I did a lot of puppetry, and um, mm -hmm. and very I really do like to keep myself interested and motivated with different things. I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, so I and and then I fell into uh, puppetry really, and did loads of work with a company called Open Hand Theatre Company, and a brilliant puppeteer called John Barber who still is my mate and we've had a theatre company together and we worked we've worked together last month as well um I was directing a show that he's in and um yeah just and then yeah just theatre 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 kept getting offered it kept doing it odds and sods of tv um but you know fairly nice parts um but nothing meaty no no main parts and so yeah you just you just you go with what you you get offered and I was just offered loads of theater and stuff like that so, which I, I love but it's yeah <laughs> the, the show reels that I saw well that the, I think one of them was you were in um Emmerdale as a as a police lady oh yeah yeah. And, and and then like some kind of badass cop or or, or detective, I I don't know what show that was, but oh, badass cop. I don't know if I'm but a detective. A I think <clears throat> sorry, oh. better in uh, informed. But I I remember both oh. performances, and I I I, oh. I think the thing that, the thing about you that that shone through mm -hmm. was um I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> I felt as if I would like you if I met you. Does that oh make right! <laughs> Even oh, though you're nice. quite a stern detective, I kind of thought, yeah, I bet she's. And you, you get that vibe with, mm -hmm. with people the way you don't obviously where you don't meet them, but you see them on screen. But I always got that sense that mm -hmm. you are like you are, which I don't know if that's. Um, oh well, might be the characters you were. If that makes any sense at all, I don't. Maybe because I think with TV and things, the things I found, I found, I found it hard doing those first soaps and things like that because they you do often get t cast as they see you mm. and I go in sort of quite nicey nicey mm. and actually I, I prefer playing things that are very different to me and that's right. where I really get a kick and I love mm. playing baddies and I'm you know mm. and so 
so to play in the nicey nicey characters, I, I I always think like, uh, they're never gonna get the best of me mm. with that, which is is really nice that if I come across as personable and things like that. But really, I like the Emmerdale some, one definitely. The Emmerdale, yeah, I'm often cast as a policewoman, or um, I was I was in um. I, no, I went, oh, it was a well, a few years ago now. But the last thing I did in Emmerdale was about it was quite a few episodes. But I was the um, I was the manager of a old people's home, um, right. and it was just you know, uh, it was just mm, because you you well you're always there to feed the main actors, mm. the main characters, and that's fine. It's fine, but you just think, oh. I'm never going to get a decent show reel out of this mm -hmm. because who wants to see someone who's saying, yes, well, they've eaten all their pudding today. <laughs> and, um, yes, oh, don't, you know, and I was like, oh, I want I to come in and something... stab someone. <laughs> well, you could have done, I suppose. That maybe they would have, yeah, let's write that in. But I, uh, <laughs> um, I think you did say something to me along those lines of, you liked being in the likes of a, a kiddo short because in your experience of TVs and TV and, and soaps was that you're kind of left in the green room. Not that you weren't bad mouthing the gig, but it was just, Ooh, it, it felt quite clinical and, and shepherded, which is quite ironic really. So you were, mm -hmm. you know, they, they call you and you go and do your part and you go back in or home. So you didn't really have a sense of, the, the the family nurse that we uh, collectively nurtured over over only four days really, mm. which I thought mm. was quite quite insightful really. What you mean you mean with the soap operas and things mm. like that? Yes, very mm. much so because I mean they've got time is money absolutely, and mm. they've got to make oh, sure yeah. whoever needs to be on set is there, and then when they've done, we don't need any more. Get back. And then this and that, and and I totally understand that. Mm. But at the same time, I kept thinking while I was doing that, thinking, "Oh, this isn't actually much fun." Um, doing the soaps and things like that. This it's actually just make sure you know your lines. No rehearsal, no discussion of character, mm. and no chance to try it again in a different way. And I did, and I did think I'd really, I would read. I think I need to try and get in a film because then. I can just explore yeah. and be and help create something that I can be really proud of and and do more sort of acting, really, mm. which is exactly how I felt doing Kiddo and um, the the couple of other films I've done. And, I've, uh, yeah, I just thought, oh, no, this is... Re Although there were really long days and doing the shot again and again and again can be tiring, it was just really exciting to know that Brett and Jordan had an eye on what they wanted and and having seen some of their work before, yeah. I knew that it was going to be beautiful mm. um, and meaningful and just they were going to do their best to get it right and they were going to allow us to try things and get it right within that framework. So of, it was, yeah, different different things. One of the I I I said to Brett that in in his interview that I hadn't imagined it would be as structured as it was. Um, I mean, Jordan is you know so meticulous about the shot list and the time frames mm -hmm. that we've got to play with, and um, and I said, did did he feel that that had any impact on the uh, spontaneity that you might get from say being in a recording studio doing an album um and he said well he said the meticulousness of uh, uh, and the detail is really then to allow you to have that space to to mm. be spontaneous and to work you know do do different takes so mm. which i i didn't i didn't really fully appreciate when i was on set but that does make a lot of sense i mean with, yeah. as far as as far as kid is, kiddo is concerned what did what did you feel when you read the the script initially what were you kind of your gut gut response can you remember any flags that you know um yeah i just thought oh this is creepy this <laughs> is there's so many questions and 
And I thought, and, and kiddo, and I thought, oh my God, they want me to read for kiddo. Mm. And she's in every, every, every scene and this will be a massive challenge. And why is that old woman there with the teenagers? And mm. this just is intriguing is what mm. I thought. And yeah, I just immediately caught, caught my imagination mm. and was just, I saw the potential of it um, as a as a cult film, mm -hmm. really, because mm -hmm. it was so strange and creepy, um, and then and and then I was just so excited to think that I might get the chance to be allowed to live and be that character mm -hmm. if I got the part, you know, over the few days to to just to really yeah try and find out what on earth mm. is going on with that with that character because it, it, it I, yeah i just thought there's so many questions here and it will, would be a real challenge to make it truthful yes um, because i like to be truthful in things i do um truthful but interesting mm. is what i sort of remember that's one of the things i remember from east 15 that they told us be truthful but be interesting and um so yeah, I just thought, wow, how how can what is going on here? Mm. Is what I thought when I read it, and yeah, just found it very intriguing. Yeah, you definitely. I mean, after seeing the the first first cut of it, I mean, you 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 come across as so profoundly sad and confused. Um, <laughs> You know, yeah. through, through the, the large part which is obviously how you're supposed mm. to be but mm. I, the more I the more I watch it because we've done quite a lot of pre-screening so not only I've been watching on my laptop but I've been watching on the screen I've been watching people's reactions and all that kind of stuff but there's some scenes in there that just get me every single time because you know I mean there's 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 one line in the kitchen um, when you say, you know, I, I thought we were friends and mm. it gets me every single time because you really seem to mean it, which I know is the job of an actor. So I'm, I'm not trying to be daft about it, but I, <laughs> I really get a sense of because of, 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 of you really feeling that. Um, and I won't spoil anything else, but I mean, that mm -hmm. I just think you did a, a, an amazing job um, and just simply being. I mean, I remember seeing your um, your submissions but uh, and I think a lot of it you didn't say anything you were just no. quiet yeah. and, and con and, you know contemplating mm. what's going on and I and I think that all struck us as where everybody was just reading doing it well but reading the lines mm. you were more like what's going on you know and and yeah. I think that's yeah. how we want that's what we wanted so and I know Brett had said he'd he'd seen you a work I think he said he worked with you for about a year on on something yeah we did we did a project together but we kept mm. coming together over the year yeah, yeah. so yeah. he'd always he'd always got you in his sights to you know once we yeah. found something that that fit for you so but oh. what were your what were your moments in the, in the film where you really felt like you'd really nailed it or you were really happy or just enjoying the moment? Um, well, just briefly going back to the the submission, if that's all mm. right, the, the, mm. um, the, the audition tape that I did, yeah. um, I was quite aware that I am a theatre actor and I really just wanted to rein everything in and just mm. try and condense what I thought Kiddo might be who I thought Kiddo might be. And I kept just, when I read it, I just kept thinking old pet dog, old pet dog, mm. um, who is, might be about to go to the vets for the last time. Yeah. Um, so that's the, so that's where I was sort of trying to channel that. Right. Um, and then on, on the shoot, um, I was, I was, I was just delighted to be there the whole time, but I couldn't show that because, no, I was being kiddo. So, and I, I just remember, um, because I've not done much screen work. I remember mean, my boyfriend actually went to like a, a screen workshop. He he isn't a professional actor, but I think he'd really like to be. Yeah, and he went to this screen workshop, and I said to him, "What were there any tips? What what?" I asked him this a while ago, and he said, "Oh yeah, yeah." The guy said, "Um, just imagine you're just in like um." 
you know, like Star Trek when they, zo they zo mm. zoom me up, Spotty. You're just in your own spotlight and you can't, everything else is blurry outside of there and you just stay within that and then you can sort of stay in your character right. and um, and then, and then, and then just, I think, and every action is deliberate, every movement has to mean something mm. um i don't know where i got that one from and then there's something i want to remember michael kane saying there's something is make sure you the eye furthest from the camera can be seen or so i don't know just i was just like so <laughs> aware of just trying to keep everything just just be in character so i was really mm. thoroughly enjoying the whole thing but i probably looked miserable the whole time because i'm just thinking don't go too far out from kiddo because I want to be truthful when the cameras mm. roll mm. sort of thing. Um, but specific, and it was so funny though, because like when we were on the bus, when we were filming on the bus, um, did we just that two day or one day when we drove around that triangle? Yeah, all it was, day. A, it was a, well, they, they got the bus for the second day, didn't they? But the, most, of right. it, most of it because of light, but most of it was done on the, on that second day. That second day. And we were on, and I was on the bus the whole time. Mm. And I'd had such a bad night sleep the night before and the night before that, that I just was, you know, when you can't keep your eyes open, you're mm. really, really tired. Mm. And I was thinking, and they they weren't they weren't even shooting me at that point. I thought, oh my god, I'm going to be asleep by the time they get to me. <laughs> I really am. And I was just like sat there looking out the window, just like really trying. So by the time I was being shot, I was just like in just a crazy state, trying to stay awake. Yeah. Trying to. Just the just bad thing. Ch channel yeah. it, channel it. No, mm -hmm. absolutely. So just hopefully it came over as extreme anxiousness, anxiety, mm. <laughs> and worry. Um, but yeah, I loved I loved all of it, and I loved working with Lauren um, mm. on our scenes, the the fight scene that was fantastic with Dale, yeah, yeah. Um, the the fight coordinator, and um, yeah, and every single bit I found enjoyable. Loved working with Paddy as well and Toby. Mm. Um, loved the scenes with Paddy. He's got such intensity in his mm. eyes, mm. and it was just fantastic working opposite them um yeah loved every every bit of it it was really special special four days i can't believe we crammed that much in in four days really i, I don't think many people can um, uh, believe how long it took to shoot and then how long it took brett to edit it to be done yeah, amazing within, within the time scale that we wanted that was yeah. pretty pretty mind-blowing really good really i think good. toby thought we might be releasing it like so when 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 are you releasing it next year and we're like no no <laughs> yeah in four weeks yeah, yeah. So, amazing it's exciting really exciting yeah and am i allowed to uh explain what um physically you had changed to be to enable you to do all that running that you did or do you want to keep yeah. it quiet? no go on what <laughs> physically well, I had changed oh I see me me hips yeah, yeah. oh yeah I know because we were doing when we were doing the I'm telling the audience this because you know it if yes. your audience um that you asked me if I ran because I was really fast when we did the running scene you were was, like so, a rocket oh I was pleased about that <laughs> back in the day I've, I've never run by the way I don't like it I've got not got the knees or or well, to be honest, everything jigs about too much. To be frank, so um, so I've never been a runner. I like swimming actually, but um, I used to love squash in the day. And they always said, "Oh, you're really quick. You're really quick." Mm. But um, it, in my forties, I had my first hip replacement because I just got osteoarthritis, wear and tear of the the hip joint, and I was forty seven when I had my first hip replaced. And my mum had had hers done as well when she was 51. So it was in the family. My yeah, uncle had his done yeah. in his 40s. So, um, and that was oh, horrible. But beforehand, having the operation was bloody brilliant. It was amazing because suddenly there was no pain and I was fit again. But then almost immediately, the other one started going. Oh, wow. So I just felt I had about eight years when I was limping, which was really annoying. But then two years ago, luckily enough, I got in before the waiting lists got bigger mm. and I had my right hip replaced. Um, and since then, I 
of just just walking and moving. I'll I love it. Mm. I just do it when I, I just I'm just so grateful to be able to be walking without pain. Um yeah. and <clears throat> I'm still not running. I don't run, yeah. but um but it is I'm so grateful for that. Well you were um, like a rocket. I know, thank you. Um, I've, I, just, I've got quick reactions, I don't know. Yeah, just... I'm trying to think where, where it was where I thought, bloody hell, that was quick, because I kind of looked away for a millisecond and you were <laughs> halfway across the shot. I don't know what it, what it, it was when we were filming I think it was when in you Sheffield. Towards, yeah, you were coming towards the mattress, weren't you? That railway yeah. bridge thing, wasn't oh, it? That, was that yeah, it? That was, oh, that bit, yeah, as well. well. I spotted how quick you were when you were running towards the mattress, and yeah. I thought, and you did it like I don't know, maybe ten times or something. Yeah, yeah. Feigning <laughs> being tired, but I didn't I didn't have a sense you were actually no at all. Um, <laughs> you seem to be the same level of tired every single time, rather than getting worse. worse, worse. <laughs> I thought she's not she's acting, but she's not exhausted. <laughs> and then we and then we did the scene where you run out of the shot and you go like you say and you oh went yeah on the, the railway Terminator, you. and I was like that's. That's like superhuman, which is why I asked you the question. <clears throat> and the the one of the reasons why I was asking you was because in the back of my mind, I remember saying to Jordan, I think it was just Jordan at the time, and I said, I think we're right on having students on the bus, and I think the age group that they need to be so that we could get it shot was fine. I would have liked them to have been considerably younger because that would have been more accurate to what I was trying to communicate, but that didn't matter yeah. so much. It doesn't have to be, you know, a hundred percent. Um, but I said, I think, I think it'd be really interesting if kiddo is significantly older than everybody else. Yeah. One, and this is, this does lead me on to my next kind of question, which I think we'll have time to do actually. Um, one, because I felt that a lady of your age and older I would imagine for the type of film we were making would have less and less opportunities to be in something like that unless mm. it's an older person. It sounds uh -huh. wrong. Yeah. You know, I'm an older man, but I'm you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, no, no, absolutely. <clears throat> Definitely. Um, and yeah. and I think I think Jordan was a bit on the fence about it. So then I spoke to Brett about it yeah. <laughs> separately to uh, kind of lobby, lobby the idea. And and Brett said, well. I think that could really work. And I think it would be really interesting to look very closely at your face and show, show the life that you've, you know, you've led. Um, and yeah. the contrast between the two could really work. And I think then yeah. we went back and Jordan had more time to think about it and went, yeah, let, let's, let's do it. And I think at that time, probably Brett went, I know exactly who could play this part as well. <laughs> um, but I know when, in the early stages of older lady, I was talking about somebody probably in their seventies to eighties yeah so really you old. mentioned but that you yeah about it, without giving anything away if you think about what we were trying to metaphorically depict mm. you would be significantly older and they would be significantly younger because the lifespan yeah. is so dramatically reduced yes uh, and jordan yeah. went there's so much running <laughs> in these scenes <laughs> I don't think she'll be able to do that you know <laughs> and yeah that's true I hadn't really thought about the logistics of a an 80 year old running woman through you know well I'm uh, sure there months. are some 80 year olds who well, are true. listening to this saying true. I'll show you <laughs> yeah but I, yeah. I think uh I did a a pre-screening in Wales a couple of nights ago and um there was quite a few people that commented on the fact you you were of an age um right and, <laughs> and it confused yeah. them um right they were they whilst you're on the bus they were like why is everyone young and this person older but you're not a teacher so you're older no. with a group of, of, of students yeah 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 you're all in the same literally on the same bus and wearing the same garb um yeah. so that's definitely worked for that... the audiences that i've spoken to which i'm really oh, that's good you, because you're... that's Sorry, no, I was just gonna say that's one of the things that when when I was reading it, I was thinking, this is so intriguing. It's mm. so intriguing. I and thought it would be because I would be intrigued. Yeah, yeah definitely. And and it might have been even more intriguing if she was 80. <laughs> no, I think we made the right but... choice. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very pleased with you being kiddo. Um, oh and, no, delighted to see. And I think that that <laughs> the whole 
I think the 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 brilliance of what uh, the the Lewis and Jordan and Brett Minds combined have done to orchestrate these the people. Um, you feel really iconic as a as a four, mm. um, mm -hmm. and um, you yeah, uh, I'm I'm mega mega chuffed, and I think oh, I think you did a, did a fantastic job, genuinely. Oh, thank you. Um, it felt, it felt like it's a going good down really well. You know, people yeah. are really yeah, really, great, really it, which is great. Um, mm. just on the on that subject of um being a woman, not even a. Oh yeah. Particularly on the yeah. uh, the lines of the age that you are, um, how have you found that through your kind of career? Has it been as bad as it now seems to be apparent it was to be a woman a working actor as, as a woman? Um, only well, um, in the sense that when I first started out, there were a lot more male roles. Mm and less um, female parts to play in that way, I suppose. Um, I mean, there, there was a time as well when I started out, it felt like all the directors were male and of a certain age. Mm -hmm. And that that is crumbling now, that is definitely crumbling. And there are people of colour and women and young, there's a lot of young women around at the moment mm -hmm. who are theatre directors and directors. So that's good to see. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, oh God, I should be flying the flag for women, and I am, and I do. Um, but I, I don't know. I take each job as I find it, and and I find more um, barriers to being when you're working class, to be right. honest, than 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 as a woman, because I've never really. I've, I was brought up equally with my brother in mm -hmm. in our household it just wasn't really easy he always did more washing up than I did and things like <laughs> that and um perhaps I would have had more opportunities if I was a man perhaps and and would I have had more opportunities if I was went to a, a posh school a better school probably um so Do you, yeah are you saying be I'd... because of your because of your kind of Cumbrian accent and way that means that you then get chosen for roles accordingly. Um, I guess so, or, or maybe it's just sort of. I mean, oh, yeah, it, it it's hard to it's hard to remain in the business if you haven't got backing and finance and things like that. I suppose, and um, and. And a lot of people drop out because they can't afford mm. to do it because they haven't got people paying for them or or the support of a parent buying them a house or mm. things like that. So I suppose any obstacle I've come up against has just been um, has been a financial one because mm. you, you think if I don't get this next job, what will I do? Mm. Um, so that the, they're the the biggest obstacles I've found. Right, um, maybe I just don't together. I don't look deeply enough at, at the obstacles that have been at my way, and I'm just sort of grateful for what I get. Mm. And then, yeah, um, more and more these days, and 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 rightly too, I think. Um, you know, casting has has become broader, and more diverse, and so I've got more competition now as I go as I go forward with uh, actresses of a different color different background mm. which I think is good yeah, I, yeah. I don't yeah. like things handed to me on a plate um I think I, I saw um Tom Segura was interviewing uh Quentin Tarantino um I watched that interview and 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 Tom said you know being in Hollywood as as long as you have been um do you find it frustrating that it, there has to be because he said in his experience if you wrote a a script 
um, the executives would be saying, well, who would play that person? Could they be potentially, um, a, you know, a, a from a minority or whatever else? And he felt yeah. like that was a it was a benefit um, if it, if they were. And he was trying to, I might be wrong on this, but I felt like he was trying to draw Quinton into some kind of conversation about how unfair that might be. Right. I, or, or at least to discuss it. Um, and Quinton quite quickly put him in his place really he said well for one thing I'm a big advocate of you know look at Pulp Fiction look at Reservoir Dogs mm. look at Django Unchained and all these other things mm. so you know I'm I, I don't have any sense of that really um, mm. but then I thought well in all honesty it's been so unfair for so long for anybody in our yeah. minority if you like um, yeah and Fucking so it should be, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's how that's how I feel. About <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that, really. And if, no. if a white guy or a white woman doesn't get the job um because there's been a tick boxing exercise, good. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. I, that's 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 maybe a little bit of um, you know, uh, uh you know, things being a little bit more positive fair, prejudice. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, so. yeah. I, 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 I do feel like that myself. I just think I feel ridiculously overprivileged mm. living <clears throat> at this time in this country. Mm. I've, you know, where I've had it. Even you know, it's been a struggle because of working class and what have you. But I mean, look at what we've got, mm. and I feel forever grateful and forever guilty that many people might have suffered for, for to allow me to have yeah. the meagre existence that I've had. So, you know, um I'd let's share it, I say. Share I it where we with where we can. I still feel yeah. that if you look at Netflix or Prime or Apple or, or or when you look at the the choices of films to watch, it still does feel very disproportionate um but yeah I think, I think there's changes afoot and and things are improving and you can you know there are a lot more films now that are a lot more balanced I feel mm -hmm. um so so I don't think it's, yeah. it's bad but then that's easy for me to say I guess it'll tr it'll but trickle it, down <clears throat> won't it? Yeah. it'll trickle down the more you see the more normal it'll be and the more people will see what they could be and they'll go for it and they'll mm. you know will change it if you, I mean, you're you're wanting to get more involved in um, film now. Is there a particular mm -hmm. genre that you've really got your eye on that you'd love to be in? Oh, um, I don't know, really. I think I pr probably in the back of my mind, I would have said horror because, or or thriller, or something, or something a bit with an edge or with a surreal angle or something. Mm -hmm that makes people think, that mm. makes people think in a different way. Um, but I, I really don't mind. I love the variety that mm. my job brings me. And if I was offered a costume drama, I'd think, yes, great. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. I'll, I'll struggle into a corset. Or, <laughs> you know, with bionic um, legs. With bionic legs, yes. <laughs> Set the alarm off. Um, um, what, but, what um, yeah. just... Because we're, we're we're getting close on on time. With uh, what are your kind of go to films? What it what what's your what's up in your your top? Um, well, I, I know I was I wonder I was wondering if you'd ask something like this. I've been watching, I've been watching a series lately, so it's not a film. Um, mm. but I'm not very I'm not very good at remembering things I watch. But somebody did recommend this Mind Hunter on netflix it's not yes. new yes you, but i do like true life crime and horror and that is particularly horrific um but i do i like yeah i like things that are a bit gruesome to be honest isn't mind hunter the uh series that explores um criminal psychology understanding yeah the, yeah which is just serial killers and them actually having patterns and and being um yeah understanding yeah. patterns of a of a of a, an ill person it shows that it's the 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 people that just 
the coined the phrase serial fil- killer yeah. and decided to actually interview those killers. Yeah, get a better and, understanding. And it was, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just amazing that before the 70s, they were just locked away and people thought, for God's sake, don't talk to them. They're crazy or whatever or evil. And just the fact that someone dared to think, well, perhaps we could actually learn something from that. I found it really fascinating. I've enjoyed Did you that. See the- did you see the scene where the protagonist gets stuck in the in the um in the room the with hospital him? with him? Yes. Yeah. yeah. An amazing moment. Amazing. Yeah. I know that was really I don't know if that really <laughs> happened, but ooh, yes, you yeah. would have a panic attack after that, wouldn't you? Yeah, because there was <laughs> he wasn't getting out of there and it no. was up to the, the serial killer as to whether that was gonna be yeah, he's gonna I know, that but that they were in there. I mean, if that is true, they were in there without weapons without guards mm. with these people it was very very interesting mm. to think no i like that mine somebody actually mine did that not. yeah so um, that's what i've been watching lately mm. um um a film i'm trying to the last film i saw at the pictures was a bit disappointing but i wanted to love it it was nope oh about yeah. the, the ufo thing mm. which on paper should have been but it just sort of lacked a through line or something. Okay. I'm not sure. I um, thought but things, I mean, that's a good know. example of of a, a predominantly black cast as well and director. Mm. Um, and and they were brilliant. They were brilliant. They were cast. brilliant. But I thought I thought the, the script lacked lacked a, a lot of substance it to it. I didn't I didn't script. feel like the actors really bought into the story very much. Yeah, yeah. It all seemed to be a little bit. I think there's a there's a phrase, isn't there? Um, it's no they no longer say films are formulaic what did they say oh uh there's a phrase that they use oh i don't know but i usually say formulaic so i'd yeah. like to know the new phrase <laughs> yeah, I can't uh, remember it now oh. um it's which we use when you use it with technology um, um oh, I don't know. but yeah I, it did feel like it was a bit paint by numbers which is a, a pretty mean thing to say really and it's i um, think you're right to think there was somewhat lacking in in with the script actually mm. because yeah all the effects I, I liked all that and I loved the relationship the brother and sister thing and that was good algorithmic yeah. that's the phrase oh that. algorithmic yes mm. yeah yeah you could be right there. A bit algorithmic yeah like, we need a bit of that we need speak. a bit of that and then everyone will like it so and that's the thing. exciting thing about making kiddo and you know we all I think strongly believe that this could be a feature and, and Ooh, as, <clears throat> the short could be still used as mm. part of you know it's the beginning part yeah. of the and yeah. because we all have autonomy over the steering wheel we don't have to go to executives for approval no. and um and mm. i think that's that's really exciting because i've been the same because yeah. my, my music side has never been particularly generous um from <laughs> remuneration point of view it does no. almost mean you can do what you like because it doesn't matter yeah, yeah. So you're not yeah. Uh, you're not gonna harm having your new kitchen because of a decision i've made because we didn't get one anyway <laughs> so, and, I, and i think it's the same thing with potentially with the film but you know it, it's a yeah. be a much bigger project that would be amazing money. or the origin story or the the series, the after effect, the aftermath of series. I think there's definitely um, room to explore your earlier relationship with Paddy and Mum. Mm. I think. Yeah, yeah. But then, but then, what happens after your final scene? Um, and mm. we, whilst you were do repeatedly running up and down the <laughs> the mattress, I was ticking away thinking this is one this should be a feature and and two how can the story so that's why i was tapping yeah. i was checking my emails i was writing up like oh, I did. that's what like, you were doing yeah <laughs> oh, i think well, the music works really well in the film mm. by the way it's great it's lovely so good the, the, you know the the song that kicks in when you're doing that run all the way mm. through and then you go over the treetop yeah. that track was actually pulled from the album quite early on ah! Because I did, yeah, so I gave Brett a SoundCloud link of all the tracks that I thought would would go on the album, and that was on there. And then yeah. I got to tell him that I'd pulled it because oh. we got, got too many tracks. <clears throat> yeah, and I wasn't because that I wrote that one. It's called Blue in the Face, and it's about after my mum had died, right. and I'd written oh. it quite quickly after she'd passed away. And it it wasn't 
it wasn't about anything to do with the subject that I was exploring. It was it was like right. a it was like a, a splinter from a previous album. So I thought, yeah. well, maybe it doesn't fit. So I pulled it and then I and then he showed me the edit and it's it's so prominent in it. And I was like, yeah. all right, that's gonna yeah. come back in then. So, <laughs> so I want to replace it with. But I am really, you know, and I'm I'm really pleased he put it in. I was surprised how much music he of mine he, he put in there as well. Yeah, yeah. So I was only expecting two, really, one at the beginning yeah. and one at the end. No, so it's good, yeah, it's really good. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Um so I think we've we've reached a nice little junction. I'm really happy to have talked to you. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, you too. Thank time. you. I was um, a bit nervous actually. Were you really? I was a bit because I just thought Oh God! I'm now going. To, what am I going to think about to chat about for an hour? And oh no, and Toby's was so good. And oh God, well, I don't know what to say. I think the benefit of the fact that we'd sat and talked to each other for four days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, I said to Toby that I, I was definitely very nervous on mm-hmm. day one in yeah. the room, meeting you all because I'd only seen you on on a laptop before. And mm-hmm. I didn't know what actors would be like, and and I <laughs> and then I didn't really have anything to to offer on those four days. I just wanted to be there to see see the baby kind of come into you know to be. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it was really nerve wracking. But I think you set me mm-hmm. to ease because I think I came down and said you know hi Lisa, and you're like oh hi, you know, and you seem to be <laughs> just like dead nice. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, most most actors are really quite down to earth friendly folk and and people you know in like all the crew all those people are just used to working together mm. and family wasn't it yeah and you don't want anyone who's a pain in the ass that's just <laughs> makes life difficult doesn't it so you you learn to either. there wasn't uh, one no, no if you're no, not nice you learn to be nice quite quickly and then yeah well that i guess that's, that, the, that's the other benefit of of Brett and Jordan and Lewis working together is they they weren't going to allow anybody like that in there because it was they were handpicking at the whole crew yeah and I think their their journey had they you know Brett had re- spotted you and worked with you so that you were perfect and and the same with with the rest of them. he'd worked with everybody else and yeah. also the crew so it was it was handpicked so. amazing I think that really amazing. shines through I think I it do. Really shines through it was very, so it's got a, a nice yeah. warm feeling about despite the subject matter. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. They were lovely, lovely, really lovely people. They really cared. Mm. That's what struck me. And about each other. It's mm. very and very um respectful of each other's different talents. It was lovely. Definitely. Really good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. And perhaps, well, no, not perhaps. Let's be positive. Um, and and mm-hmm. manifest um, the fact that we are going to make a feature, and, Come on. Um, and you and I will be talking again. Um, yeah. Who knows? You know, in, in maybe who knows? how long these things take. I mean, I know, I know it took no. us a year to to get a short done, but I right. think a lot of it, a lot of the time was was waiting um, for a, a certain part of the project. I think once once everything was everything was in place, it actually was quite a thing, quick thing to. Mm-hmm. To yeah. make. so hopefully maybe in a year or two's time we could be having a quite different conversation i know i hope so that would be amazing have got christmas well, christmas yeah and then well I, i've sort of christmas is by the by the wayside i'm waiting for the 29th yeah that's it's true really yeah yeah the film i know that's exciting I don't know what what that will feel like on the what will happen people might say nice things about us to us maybe well I, there was one of the ideas that did get like bit kicked into the long grass and I said I wanted to make it a Christmas film <laughs> <laughs> because of, you know not? Christmas dinner people are having big loads big to meet of, at Christmas lots of lots of that yeah exactly absolutely and so it'd yeah be really nice we could have the Christmas lights you know along the along the bus and, and then when you're having your dinner and that kind of stuff and Jordan went no because it's the wrong time of year and um, <laughs> won't work. And I think Lewis said, without throwing them all under a bus, um, <laughs> Lewis said, um, well, you don't want a film that just comes back every year, you know, so you want a bit more longevity. Mm. Um, but if right. we had have done, um, it would have been really good timing. Because I think that the, the, the fact that 
it drops on the 29th is just after everybody's just filled themselves full of yeah stuff yeah and um and then maybe yeah. they'll have a chance to reflect because then it drops into big January in January yes of course yeah we've been, we've been very lucky with things that have not happened and taken a while and dropped us into the 29th so and so all just said, yes well. I think after only that I know I think Lewis sent the link off yeah. and then within an hour or so it came back and he said yeah they, they want to do it so brilliant oh, good. fantastic Mm. All right, well, th- thank you for your time. Well done, thank you. Take care. All right, see you later.